Today we're going to talk about different control charts, where to find them, what they are, what they're good for, and how to use them. So let's get started. If you want to follow along in today's session, go to help, go to sample data folder, it might be called sample data library if you have a previous version of jump. Go into the search field and write diameter. And open up that data. Before we get started, uh, click the red triangle and go to clear row states, just so we don't have anything saved there. And I also want to add a specification limit to the diameter. So right click on the diameter, say column info, and go to specification limit. Set the lower specification limit to two, the target to four, and the upper specification limit to six, and highlight that you want these to be shown on future graphs. And then say, okay. Now we get a star that indicates that diameter now has some metadata, and we can see we have that spec limit right there. Then we go to Analyze, Quality and Process, Control Chart Builder, and we take the diameter and drag it into Y, and press Done. Now, if you want to learn about how this the setup of a control chart, I have another video, you can find the link below. So maybe go give that a watch if you're unsure of what all these lines mean. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is what we call these different charts and when to use them. So for example, here I have an individual and moving range charts of diameter. So what that means is that we have up here an individual chart. So it's individual measurements plotted. And beneath that, we have a moving range chart. So if you were to find that in a textbook, it would be called an IMR chart because it belongs to, of an individual and moving range chart. You can see that by going into Analyze, Quality and Process, Control Chart, that this is an EMR chart. Okay. If I wanted to plot, let's say, means instead, I would need to have some sort of subgroup where I calculate the mean and then plot the mean instead. So to do that, you can right click, say set subgroup size. So we're going to specify five and press OK. And now we have a X bar and R chart. So difference now is that we have means, X bar being the an estimate for the mean. And beneath that, we have a range chart, which is the range of the data uh, within that subgroup. The range being the highest point subtracted with the lowest point, giving us the entire the range of that. We can change this into an X bar and S chart by going into the control panel. And then in the points two down here, we select statistics to standard deviation. You see that now we have an X bar and S chart because now we don't no longer have the range. We have the standard deviation. And last thing we might want to be doing is right clicking and then saying add dispersion shot. And that brings us to these three different charts. Now the first one is plotting as we already spoken about the mean of each of the groups. The next one is the a moving range chart in the same manner that with the moving range of individual side is the range between neighboring points. So you see this difference is not very big, so therefore this is not a very high point. But here we have a big difference, and therefore we also have almost out of control measurement there. And the last one here is then the S chart, which is the standard deviation, and is the standard deviation within a group. So we have the ongoing mean of the process, we have the ranges between mean, and we have the standard deviation within a group. Now I want to calculate some of these numbers to show you that it is what I say it is. So let's select a point. So I click on, let's say that point. I can pin, pin this one down so it stays. And we can take the standard deviation as well, pin it down. And I then, because it selected that point, the if I press Control Alt D, I open the associated data and I can see, you can see that I have those five points selected. And now if you right click on that selected portion, you can say data view. I then get a subset of the data, which are 
those five data points that is being used to calculate that point. I can go to analyze distribution. Say I want to look at the diameter. Okay. And then we see that the mean is five is 4.96, equaling to that five up there. And we have a standard deviation of 0.13, which is a, two, a lot of transitions <laughs> in that one. Uh, so we see the standard deviation there as well. So if you have a running production, I would say these three charts is a really good idea to keep an eye out for because you really get everything you get you need to know. You get the running mean, you get if you have any neighboring points, any sudden shifts by the ranges between your points, and you have whether you have any sudden shifts in standard deviation by looking at the standard deviation within every point or subgroup. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to give it a like if you did and subscribe if you want more content like this, but see you in the next one. Bye.